Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Before we begin here, please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because it really does help us out overall and it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be discussing today is static equilibrium and we're going to be solving the problem shown on the screen. So with this problem what we have is we have this 3600 pound weight being applied at point C and then we have two cables of AC and BC trying to pull back and keep this weight in equilibrium with both of those cables being in tension. So when you're working on an equilibrium problem, what you wanna do is you wanna start by drawing a free body diagram. In most cases, that would be a good first step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up an X, Y coordinate system. And yeah, that's pretty straight lines, as good as it's gonna get. So we have an X, Y coordinate system and my origin point is going to be where all the forces, known and unknown, attach. So it'd be point C. So I'm just going to throw on all my known forces and my unknown forces. So I have my known of 3,600 pounds here of that weight. And then I have my two cable forces pulling back in tension, trying to keep that weight from falling. And this is what we're tasked with finding, are these unknown forces of AC, and unknown force at BC. Now, this particular problem is utilizing dimensions for our, um, our cables instead of degrees with the horizontal or with the vertical. So when you're utilizing dimensions instead of degrees, you just create a little triangle and you just throw on those uh, dimensions. So with the first one of FAC, we have a vertical distance from C all the way up to A of 48 inches. So that would be my vertical. And then a horizontal of 20 inches. And then looking at FBC, same vertical displacement there, or not displacement, but distance of 48. And then a horizontal of 55. So the way we use these little triangles is I believe the method is called, at least I call it, depends upon who you're talking to. I call it the triangle proportional method. So what you want to do whenever you have these dimensions or these little dimension triangles is that you want to fill out the hypotenuse side. So the first one, we have 48 and 20. And then for the second one, FBC, we have 48 and 55. So we can just utilize the Pythagorean theorem here, and we can find out what this hypotenuse side is for each one, which the first one of 48 squared plus 20 squared square rooted gives us a value of 52. So this hypotenuse side is 52. And then just repeat that process for the second one, which is 55 squared plus 48 squared, square rooted, and that gives us 73 as a distance there. So fill that in up there. So what we're gonna use, is we're gonna use these uh, dimension uh, triangles as ratios for the slopes of those forces of FAC and FBC. So with all equilibrium problems, eventually what you're going to have to do is some forces in the Y and some forces in the X with both of those equations equaling out to be zero for equilibrium. So after doing your free body diagram, if you really don't know what your next, next step would be, this is usually a good place to go. So let's go ahead and start doing those equilibrium equations. And let's start with the Y. We'll take all the forces in the upward direction in the vertical to be positive, everything in the downward to be negative. And of course, everything in this equation has to cancel to be zero. So starting with FAC, FAC is gonna have a ratio attached to it using those numbers on the little triangle because this is the slope of the line, also the angle of the line. So whenever you have these numbers and these little ratios here, your hypotenuse side will always be along the bottom. So that would be our 52 for FAC. And then what goes in the numerator here? Well, it will be the direction or the dimension that is looking in the same direction that you are. So the 48 is measuring vertically and we are looking in the vertical direction with Y. So we're gonna use 48. Always use the dimension that is parallel to the direction you're looking at. The 48 is vertical. The Y is vertical, so we're going to go with 48. Now, this would be a positive direction here. 
because FAC is going up and to the left. So its components in the X and Y direction will be up and to the left. And looking at FBC here, its components will also be up, but to the right, since the arrow is up and to the right. So we have FAC completed here. Now let's complete FBC. As I just mentioned, it will be positive because its component is upward because the whole arrow is up and to the right. And utilizing the dimension ratio once again, well, the hypotenuse is 73, so that will always be in the bottom. And then the 48 is what's measuring, measuring vertically here, and we're looking in the vertical direction. So that, that is what goes in the numerator. And then lastly, let's not forget the minus 3,600 weight that these two cables are supporting. It is negative because that's the way gravity works. Gravity is always pointed downward. So there's our completed Y equation. Can't solve for FAC or FBC. Well, that's what typically happens with these problems that you have two equations with two unknowns. So let's go to our second one of FX. Anytime you write an equilibrium equation out and you can't solve for anything inside of it, just go to your next one. It's not a big deal, just go to your next one. All right, so let's work with the X here. We'll take everything to the right as positive, everything to the left is negative. So FAC's component in the X direction will be pointed leftward, so that would be minus FAC. Once again, we're gonna have a ratio, and it's gonna be our hypotenuse in the bottom, which is 52. And now we're gonna utilize the 20 because the 20 is measuring in the horizontal, and that's what we're looking at, so 20 over 52. And then we are going to have plus FBC, because the component is pointed to the right for FBC, that's positive direction, over our ratio, or times our ratio here, which is 73 in the denominator. And then we are going to have 55 in the numerator, because that is the dimension that is parallel to the x. And that's all we have in the x direction. The 3,600 is 100% in the y. Don't include it in the x. So once again, can't solve for anything in the x by itself. But what we can do is that we can rearrange the x equation such that we would have FAC or FBC in terms of the other variable and then plug it into FY and then we can solve it that way. When you have two unknowns, you need two equations to solve for it. So I don't need my free body diagram anymore because I've translated them and all my pictures into um, my equations here. So I'm going to utilize the FX equation. So from the FX, I'm going to take FAC to the other side of the equation. So I have FBC, which is 55 divided by 73 is equal to FAC times 20 over 52. Writing all of this in decimal form, so 55 over 73 is 0 0.753 times FBC is equal to 20 divided by 52, which is 0 0.358 times FAC. So FBC is essentially 0 0.385 over 0 0.753 FAC, which 3, uh, 0 0.385 divided by 0 0.753 gives me 0 0.511 FAC. So what I can do with this information is that I can take the 0 0.511 FAC and plug it into the equation of the Y equation for FBC. That way everything in that Y equation is in terms of of FAC, and then I can solve for FAC. So let's do that. Change colors here. So plugging into the FY equation. So we would have FAC times 48 over 52. Well, let's just go ahead and throw that in a decimal form. So 48 over 52 gives me 0 0.923 times FAC. And then plus my new portion here, which is 0 0.511 FAC times 48 over 73 in decimal form is 0 0.657. And then minus 3,600 is equal to zero.
So what we can do is we combine like terms, send other stuff to the other side of the equation. So we would have 0 0.923 FAC plus 0 0.511 times 0 0.657 gives me 0 0.335 FAC. And then I would take the 3600 to the opposite side of the equation here, which is a positive 3600. So combining these two terms here, so 0 0.923 plus 0 0.335 gives me 1.259 FAC is equal to 3,600. Well, FAC then will be 3,600 divided by 1.259. So the total value of FAC is 2,860 pounds in that general up left direction intention. So I still need to find the other one, which is FBC. Well, I am going to take my FAC and plug it into this equation right here, which I have written out before for FBC. Because FBC is 0 0.511 times FAC, which is 2860. So FBC pops out to be 1461.5 pounds in that general upright direction. So those are my two cable tension forces, and that's how to find them. Now, in the end, with equilibrium problems, what you want to do and what you can do, what you should do, is that you should check your answers. And the way you check your answers is just take what you have for FAC and FBC, and plug them back into your equilibrium equations to make sure they equal zero. Now, the, this is not a fail safe, meaning that if it does work, it's 100% correct. You could have screwed up in the very beginning, but it just lets you know that you did the math correctly throughout here. So let's go ahead and let's give this a check here. So I plug back into the FY equation. So I have FAC, which is 2860 times the ratio of 48 over 52. And then I have plus FBC, which is 1461.5, times its ratio of 48 over 73, and then minus off 3,600. And that gives me an answer of 0 0.98. Oh, well, that's not exactly zero. So does that mean we've done something wrong? No it will rarely come out to be exactly zero in the end. It should be very close, but the reason why it doesn't is because of rounding. We rounded off the ratios when we took them into decimal form, such as this right here. And we also rounded off our answers and rounded off when we plugged them back in. So there's a lot of rounding going on here. Now, if you took every number exactly as it is, then this should be zero. But this value is rarely gonna be zero due to rounding of the decimals, but it should be very close um, compared to what your answers are. So for instance, 0 0.98 over a total of 2860 for FAC is a very small number and is almost zero. So that little bit off from zero is just a rounding and that's nothing to worry about. So in my book, yeah, that's a good check and it's just rounding that is the difference. So that's how you would solve this particular equilibrium problem. I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved with variety, please check out our videos on our channel because we do have a lot of equilibrium videos and we are going to continuously upload equilibrium videos more and more each week. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and please subscribe to our channel because it really does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.